These are called the kinematic equations. Shout out one of them. V equals V naught plus A times change in time. Okay. Give me another one. X equals I think you mean V naught delta T plus one half A delta T squared. Okay. And what's the last one? V squared. This is V naught squared. Plus two A times change in X. These are the kinematic equations. We can derive all of these algebraically. We can also derive them all from calculus. We can find these if we just know the definitions of what velocity and acceleration actually are. So we know what velocity is in terms of position. A velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time, dx dt. V equals dx dt. We also know the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. Acceleration is dv dt. And since V is the derivative of X, we also know that A is the second derivative of uh, position with respect to time. So we can use all these differentials to find these kinematic equations. Let's, let's, let's do that. So let's take uh, A equals dV dt. And let's do a little bit of calculus and algebra. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the, both sides of this equation by dt. Multiply the left, multiply by the right by dt. I should end up with an a times dt equals dv. All right? Because if I multiply a dt, anything I multiply on one side, I have to multiply on the other. That cancels out on the right-hand side, and it's still left on the uh, uh, left-hand side. So I have this. Okay, let's do a little bit more calculus. Let's uh, integrate both sides of this. So I'm going to integrate the left-hand side, and I'm going to take the integral of the right-hand side. Anytime you write an integral, what do you need at the bottom and top of an integral? Anybody know? Supportive. Limits. I need endpoints. I need a starting point and a finishing point. Starting point uh, is at the bottom, end point is at the top. So I need to take this integral. So this integral uh, starting point for time will go zero time all the way up to some time t. And then starting point for velocity will go with some initial velocity up to some final velocity. OK, so I have this integral. Integral of a dt equals integral of dv. A. What do we know about A in constant acceleration motion? Kinematic equations apply if your acceleration is just constant. So what do we know about A in constant acceleration motion? What is it? It's constant. It's just a number. It's not changing. It's a number. So because it's not changing, what can I do with it inside of an interval? It just comes out of the integral. And I can pull it right off. Who cares? This is just a times the integral from 0 to t of dt equals the integral from v0 to v final of dv. OK. Integral. Another name for integral is antiderivative, right? So what is the antiderivative of the derivative of t? t. If you take the integral of the derivative, you get out just the variable. So the integral of dt is just plain t. So this is a times t. And I need to plug in my limits. I'm going from 0 to t. setting up those endpoints. That's the kind of notation that they, that they, that they use. OK, so I've got 
I've got the left-hand side integrated. That's great. The integral of the derivative of, of something is just that something. It's just that variable. This is the integral with respect to velocity, the integral of dv. So what's the integral of dv? V. You can think of that integral sign as just getting rid of the d. That's all it does. It gets rid of it. They cancel each other out. The antiderivative of the derivative gives you just the variable. So I have v left over on that, that right-hand side. So that's equal to v. And I have limits from v0 to v final. And when you're plugging in limits, what you want to do is you want to start at the final position and plug it in, and then subtract off the initial position. Yeah, so this would be a times the final, which is the one up top, t, minus the one on the bottom, 0. That's going to be equal to plugging in the final limit minus the initial limit. Okay, what's uh, a times t? Gives me a t. a times zero, what's that? Zero. Zero equals vf minus v zero. Let's move the v zero to the other side just because we're, we're going crazy today. Okay, so we add v zero to both sides, cancels it out on the right hand side, and I end up with v final equals v naught plus. A times T. Does that look familiar? Should. Yeah. That's, what we that's the equation we just started with. So that's where it comes from. What? That's what Isaac Newton did when he was locked up due to the plague. He created calculus so he could make these equations. When I was locked up due to the coronavirus. I just watched Netflix. Right, so this is, this is one of those kinematic equations. And we found it, right? We found all that complicated junk just, just from this. That's all we had to do. We built it out. Okay, let's build it. Let's build it again from a different, from a different uh, calculus equation. Let's uh, take the definition of velocity. V equals dx over dt. Okay. And we're going to take the equation that we just found. We just found v equals v naught plus a times t. And we're going to use those two equations to find another one. This is love doing this. Just take an equation, move a number, uh, combining things. So everywhere where I see that v, right there, that v is the same as dx dt. So I can plug that in. So let's do that. Let's plug in dx over dt equals v. So I plug in dx over dt, and that equals v naught plus a times t. Let's make that look more like an x. Who likes fractions? Anybody like fractions? Yeah. Holy guy in the back likes fractions. Anybody else like fractions? <laughs> fractions suck. Fractions can bite me. So let's get rid of the fractions. How do I get rid of the fraction there? What do I need to do? Multiply dt on both sides. Multiply dt on both sides. It'll cancel out on the left. And then I end up with dx equals v naught plus a times t. Put that in parentheses because I need to distribute that dt into both side, both elements on that right hand side. Okay. So that was just algebra. Now let's do calculus. I don't like the dx's and the dt's. How do I get rid of those? Integrate. Integrate. Do the little curly s. So let's integrate the left hand side, and we'll integrate the right hand side. 
If I write an integral, what do I need at the bottom and the top? Limit. I need endpoints. I need limits. So what limit should we use? Let's use some initial position and some final position. Sure. What should my limits be on the right-hand side? Initial velocity and one vote. One vote for velocity. Time. One vote for time. How do I know what variable should be in for the limits? Here I have dx, so I used x as limits. Here I have dt, so what should I use as the limits? Time. I should use time, t. So I need some initial time and some final time. Then I can just plug in a variable for those, t0 and tf. Two and tuff. Okay, so I plug those in. Now can we do these integrals? Actually, let's, let's write this out a little bit more. Let's write out the integral from x0 to x final of dx equals the integral from t0 to t final of v0 times dt. So I'm distributing the dt in to both elements. So then I need to also add the integral from t0 to tf of a times t dt. So I take that dt, I multiply it into the v naught, made that one equation, and then put the dt, put it into the at, and so I'm just splitting it out. Yes? Could you not square the t because dt is like attached still? The dt uh, and t, when you multiply those together, the dt doesn't get multiplied like multiplication. It's associated as a derivative of time. So that tells you how you're supposed to integrate this. So that t isn't a regular t. It's not a t right. So let's integrate the left-hand side. What's the integral of dx? x. x. Curly piece gets rid of that. And then we need our limits. What, what's the lower limit? X0 and the upper limit XF. Okay, now let's do the other side. Equals, what's the integral of V naught DT? V not t. So I take I take the v not out. It can come out of the integral. I take the integral of dt. Integral of dt is t. So I have v not t. And what are the limits? T zero and t f. Plus, let's do this in a couple steps. Whenever you're doing an integral, what you want to do is only leave pieces of your equation under that integral that have uh, something that's related to the variable that you're integrating over. So what variable am I integrating over here? What's my variable in this integral? T. T. How do I know that? Because it says dt. Right? If it said dy, my variable would be y. If it said dx, over here my variable is x. Here it says dt, so my variable is t. So as far as that t is concerned, Anything that isn't t is a constant, and you can just pull it right out. A. What's A? It's a constant, right? So I can pull it out of the integral. So let's pull that out of the integral. This makes the integral a little bit easier. So I have A times the integral from t0 to t final of t times dt. So I have x final minus x initial. Plugging in my limits, I have x plug in x final minus my initial zero. And that's going to be equal to v naught times t final minus t initial plus a times what is this integral? What's the integral of t dt? t squared over 2. Okay. That's equal to the limits from t0 to tf. 
x final minus x zero is equal to v naught times t final minus t zero plus a times t final minus t zero squared over two. Okay. And what can what can you do with uh, xf and x zero minus f, x zero? Or any time you're taking a final minus initial. What's what's the short kind of, kind of shortcut? Yeah. Can you, use, you make those deltas. Right. So this can be delta x is equal to v naught times delta t plus one half a times delta t squared. Does that look familiar? Yeah. Yep. That's another one of the kinematic equations. So this is where they're coming from. They are coming from calculus. Uh, that comes from the integral, so the general integral x to the n of dx is equal to x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay, so if I have x to the 1, I have x to the 1 plus 1 is 2 divided by 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is a good point. This is a general integral that you should be familiar with. If you're not familiar with this, don't remember doing that, let me know. Tell me. As I'm walking around that, tell me that you need more help with this, with any of this calculus stuff, with taking a derivative, taking an integral. I just need to know where you're at. Some of you have seen this before. Uh, maybe all of you have seen this before and you're having no problems. Uh, if you are having problems or don't recognize it, that's fine. I just need to know so I can create stuff to help. So tell me if you're having any problems with the calculus stuff. And then along those lines, I have a calculus challenge. We've derived two of the equations so far. What equation haven't we done yet? Uh, the v plus 2a uh, delta x. Yeah. So this is the other kinematic equation. Using the same kind of concepts that we just did with the previous two equations, I want you to prove this equation uh, using calculus. I'll give you a hint. Here's my wonderful hint. A equals dv dx dx over dt. So you do a little bit of algebra, a little bit of calculus to get this equation starting from here. Okay. That is a extra point challenge. Uh, so write your answer on a separate sheet of paper uh, and see if you can do that once you've finished all the in-class assignments that you have for today. Okay. Questions on that? We clear on this challenge. Is what? You can work at it as a group. I just need everybody to write it out on their own sheet of paper because you'll turn in your own individual sheets. If you get it wrong, you don't lose any credit. There's no... Penalties for not getting it right. Fail. And <laughs> no failures yet. Your first test is coming up soon. Okay? And this is only <laughs> something you should do once you've finished all the other problems that I've assigned. All the other work. This is this is the last thing you should work on. Okay? Check canvas. Next thing to quickly talk about. Let's do a couple of sample problems. Okay, so let me help you with some problem solving. Let's do uh, problem number 114A. You talk about in textbook, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is number 114A. And again, I'm recording this, so uh, this video will go up onto the YouTube channel that you can get access to anytime you want. So 142 part A Let says a cyclist sprints at the end of a race to clinch a victory. Can you guess why I chose this question? Yeah, okay. Uh, she has an initial velocity of 11.5 meters per second and accelerates at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared for 7.00 seconds. Part A, what is her final velocity? And that's the only part I want us to do. They get overly complicated in the, the next few parts. So anytime I'm doing a problem that involves kinematic equations or answering things about motion, uh, if they give me numbers, I always start in the same exact way. 
And this way I can get some partial credit no matter what. So what I do is I make a chart of all the kinematic equations. So we know VF equals V naught plus A delta T. We know change in X equals V naught times change in T plus one half A times change in T squared. And we know VF squared equals V naught squared plus two times A times change in X. So that's the baseline equations we know. And we also know some variables in these equations. Same, equa same variables appear in all these equations, right? We always have some kind of change in position. We, have, we always have an initial velocity. We always have a final velocity. We always have an acceleration. Always have a change in time. These five variables are the five key variables to know combined with these three equations. If you write this down for every single problem, you'll be able to get partial credit on everything. Now what you do at this point is you look at what the problem gives you and identify what do I know and what do I not know and what do I want to know. So let's read the problem again. A cyclist sprints at the end of a race to clinch a victory. Does that give us anything helpful? No. No numbers there. Nope. Piece of trash. Horrible problem writer. She has an initial velocity of 11.5 meters per second. So can I plug something in? Yes. What can I plug in? Initial velocity. Initial velocity of 11.5 meters per second. Okay. Uh, and accelerates at a rate of 0.5 meters per second squared for seven seconds. What else can I plug in? Acceleration. Acceleration is 0.5 meters per second squared. for 7.00 seconds. What is that? That's a change in time, 7.00 seconds. Okay, what things do I not know? I don't know change in position. And I don't know the final velocity. Let's see if I care about any of those. Question A, what is her final velocity? So I wanna know the final velocity. Do I care about the change in X? No. Do I need to solve that? No. Not according to this problem so far. So we'll change this VF to a blue question mark because we want to find this. Okay, so I know V naught, I know A, I know T, I want to know VF. So I need to look at those kinematic equations and figure out which one I can use to find this. Can I use the third one? No. Why can't I use the third one? I like the third one. I like squaring things. Because you don't have change in position. I don't have change in X. What happens if I try to use the, the third equation? Do, do I know what VF is? No. No, so I don't know that. Do I know what V0 is? No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I could plug that in. Equals 2 times A. Do I know what A is? Yes. Yeah, I could find it. Uh, I, I know what A is. I can, I, do I know change in X? No. no. I don't know change in X. So that's two unknowns in that equation. If I have two unknowns inside of an equation, how many equations do I need to solve it? However many unknowns are in an equation, you need that many equations to solve it. So maybe we don't want to use equation three. Uh, how about equation number two? Change in x, I don't know what that is. V naught, do I know what that is? Yes. 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 Change in time, do I know what that is? Yes. yes. Uh, one half, do I know what that is? I hope so. That's a number. Uh, A, do I know what that is? Yes. Yeah. T, do I know what that is? Yes. Yeah, so I can solve this equation, can't I? Yes, but you don't. I can plug it all in, and what do I get? A random number. I get a number, and what's that number? Change Not relevant. Change in X, do I care? No. No, who gives a flying hoop? Okay, so let's go to the other one. This equation. VF. Do I know what VF is? No. No, but that's what I'm looking for. Who? Equals V naught. Do I know what that is? Yes. Yep. Do I know what A is? Yes. Yep. Do I know what T is? Yes. Yep. Okay, so I can use that. Would there be anything wrong with me using the second equation, finding what x is, and then using the third equation to find vf? You could. You could. You could do that. Just take you a little bit longer. There are multiple ways to solve all these problems. But probably the first equation is the easiest. You can just plug your numbers right in. So I can plug in vf equals v naught. So v naught is 11.5 meters per second plus A 
is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Times change in time is 7.00 seconds. Okay, so you can bust out your calculator and solve the number. But let's look at the units, too. I'm looking for a final velocity. What are the units of velocity? Uh, meters. Meters, time. meters per second. Yeah. Some yeah. distance divided by some time. Okay. Yeah. SI units, meters per second. I recommend always converting every single unit in your problem to SI units. So 11.5 meters per second plus 0.5 meters per second squared times seconds. What's meters over seconds squared times a second? Meters, meters over seconds. Second. Meters, meters over seconds? Meters per second squared? Meters per second squared. Multiply that by a second. So this second here cancels with one of the seconds at the bottom, and I end up with just meters per second. So this is called dimensional analysis. And is that what I want? Yeah, because I want velocity. I want all these units to be the same. So I want final velocity. Uh, so if you plug all this into your calculator, you will get out an answer. That answer will be 15 meters per second. Yes, sir. So plug that into your calculator and make sure that you are getting 15 meters per second. Make sure that you can do this. Yeah, yeah. If you're not getting out the right answer, then, then I need to come help you. Okay, last sample problem I want to do for you is one that involves uh, calculus, problem number 113. So they give us an equation. They tell us the position as a function of time of some object is equal to 5.0 times t squared minus 4.0 times t cubed. And that answer they're saying is in meters. And what they want us to do is use this equation to predict the velocity and the acceleration of this object at any future time. So based on that equation, I should be able to tell you how fast this thing is going and how fast how much it's accelerating at any given time, no matter what. How do I do that? How do I find the velocity from this? Take the derivative. So velocity is the derivative of x with respect to time. So time is my variable. I need to take this derivative uh, using, using t as the variable. So what's the derivative of 5 times t squared? 10t. Let's look at the general equation for a derivative. Derivative of x to the n. What is that equal to? N x. N x. x. power of n minus 1. What's that called? Do you know that rule? Is it the power rule? Sure. I don't remember names. Okay, so that's the power rule. We should be familiar with the power rule and how to use the power rule. I'm a little confused, though. So this says x to the n, and I have 5t squared. I have a number out front. What do I do with the number? Number just stays there. It's fine. So I can take this derivative. <coughs> x of t is 5.0. I'm taking whatever the n variable is. In this case, the 5.0 t squared. The variable of the n is t is 2 in this case. So I bring the 2 out front. And then I have t. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. So there's an implied 1 right here. And then I've got 4.0. And what do I need to do with the 3? Bring it out front, t squared. So that is my derivative. So my velocity equation is going to be 10 times t minus uh, 12 times t squared. How do I find the acceleration at any time? Take the derivative of that dv dt. So 10 to the 10 times t derivative of that is 10 minus derivative of 12t squared 24t. Be able to take derivatives pretty quickly. Okay, so I have the acceleration. Uh, I'm adding an additional component. I want to know the jerk. 
How do I find the jerk from this? Anybody know how to find a jerk? Go look in a mirror. How do you find a jerk? Had I heard some, I, I heard somebody say antiderivative. What would the antiderivative of A be? V. Okay, so that takes me backwards. Jerk. What's jerk? Jerk is the derivative of acceleration. So if I take the derivative of acceleration, that's what's called jerk. So negative 24 is the jerk. What if I want to know what's the velocity at five seconds? Can I find that? How do I find the velocity at five seconds? Plug in five seconds into the velocity equation. What about position at two seconds? How do I do that? Plug two seconds into the position equation. How do I find the jerk at a million seconds? It's negative 24. Any questions on this? So those are the two kinds of problems that you'll be solving in this kind of uh, chapter. Some of them using the kinematic equations, plugging and chugging stuff into your calculator, playing with equations, uh, and some of them using uh, calculus and taking derivatives and integrals. You should be good at going forwards and going backwards uh, for deriving these. How do I find the jerk? I took the derivative of acceleration. So the derivative of this. Derivative of 10 is zero because it's a constant. Derivative of negative 24t is negative 24. Jerk. Okay. Velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. Previous equation. Okay. So you still have the rest of class to keep working on the in-class problems. If you have any questions on anything, come ask me. Uh, you might notice there are occasionally typos or mistakes inside of the solutions or inside of the lecture videos. Sometimes those are genuine mistakes. So when you see a mistake, ask me about it. Sometimes those are on purpose so that I can look at your homeworks and see who's just copying the solutions and submitting those. The mistakes that are on purpose are very obvious mistakes. So they're arithmetic. It's like I multiplied two numbers together, five times two and got a thousand. Okay, so if you find arithmetic mistakes, ask me about it. And then I know you're actually. Work together and talk to each other. Not one of your That's one of those arithmetic mistakes. So that's just plugging a number in the calculator. So I could go back and actually finish chapter one. Uh, one and, uh, uh, like to get the order of margin. Order is a magnitude. Yeah, that'll raise it to the uh, times ten. To the uh, but when I hit enter, isn't there a magnitude? Not necessarily with this calculator. Uh, it just stores it as that. Order of magnitude. So order of magnitude is how many factors of 10 are inside of you. 